Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Kodak Pix Pro SP360. This is one of these 360 degree cameras that uh, you typically point straight up in the air and it captures everything around you. This is a very video centric device, so you can go out and shoot a video and have your viewers be able to uh, basically look all around the scene. It's pretty cool stuff, and uh, the 4K sensor on this does improve the image quality a bit because of the way uh, these cameras shoot their video. I'm going to show you exactly what it sees. Uh, in just a second and explain how all of it works. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, I've had no direct communication with Kodak on this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a quick look at the hardware now. Really nothing complicated on this one. It's very video centric. Uh, you've got this very wide angle lens on here. I'm gonna hook up my HDMI cable to the device here so you can see what it sees. So it will output uh, its output in uh, real time via HDMI. However, I don't know of any uh, software at the moment that will help you live stream it. So uh, you will be able to see an image, but you'll see that image just kind of looks like this. And this is what uh, it sees while you're out shooting video. And what happens is in its software, uh, it unfolds this image and allows you to get that 360 degree look. And that's partly why it's kind of a good thing to have a 4K sensor on this because we looked at the uh, Ricoh Theta not too long ago, which is a similar product. And uh, the video looked very uh, low resolution because you're putting so much visual information into a very small space. This does give you more resolution to work with, uh, but unfortunately it's still not looking fantastic. So here's a video I shot this morning as I was out walking my dog. I can move around and look around the scene here, but it doesn't look as sharp as a regular camera, which is only shooting in one direction might look, but it does give you a better image quality than I saw out of the Ricoh Theta. So it does have some uh, capacity to deliver a better quality image. It does have uh, some stabilization, although I would not recommend watching this on a pair of Google Cardboard just from all the motion going on here, but you can get a sense as to uh, what the video quality looks like out of it. So not too bad, but you might want to get two because I can look up on on this image because the camera lens is pointed up, but I really can't look down, and that's because it can only see from here on up. So you can get another camera. They actually sell a kit with two cameras together uh, that you can use to capture the entire globe around you if you really want to get a fully immersive experience. Otherwise, it'll be 360 degrees from the lens up on it. Now this particular configuration is $500 with the single camera. They call this the Premier Pack, and they also uh, give you a box full of accessories that give you a bunch of different mounts and brackets and everything. So this is stuff that would typically cost extra with other action cameras. You get a bunch of these side brackets, you get a suction cup for your dashboard, and a number of other little accessories as well. I'll put a list up, or a link to a list, on the uh, video description so you can make sure it has everything you're looking for. I was also pleased that it has a tripod mount here at the bottom also, so you can attach it to uh, any tripod you wish to use. Now again, it's very video centric in how it works, but it will take still photos. You can change the modes up here. You can also reduce its video resolution if you wish to do that, but I don't recommend doing that, especially if you are shooting in 360. You need all the resolution you can get uh, to get as sharp an image as possible. It works off of a micro SD card. I had a 128 gigabyte card in here that I was using earlier. Uh, no problems with that size of a card. However, it does not come with the cards. So you'll need to get one uh, in order to record anything with the camera. A uh, USB connection here for transferring data. It will also charge it uh, while a battery is installed. I could not operate the camera with external power without the battery, but it was able to charge the battery uh, when it was plugged into a uh, power source. So you can get power into it as well as transfer data. And then you have that HDMI port that I demonstrated earlier. Wi-Fi is built in too. We'll check out that app in just a second to see how that works. And that's pretty much it, a pretty simple device. The battery goes in here on the bottom. All right, let's take a look now at the software. I am running it in Windows it does run halfway decently on the Windows side, although the software itself is not very intuitive, as you'll see here in a second. If you are on a Mac, don't even buy the camera. The software is completely unstable. It crashes all the time. It doesn't upload video when it says it does. Uh, it was really not a very good experience and something I just cannot recommend to Mac owners. Uh, my biggest gripe was that they didn't even take the time to go through the uh, Apple developer program and get their application security signed. So when you go and try to install it, it pops up a security warning and requires requires you to reduce your security settings to even get the software installed in the first place. Really uh, bad oversight and not something I am going to recommend to Mac users. On Windows, it's not as bad. Uh, you cannot resize the window to your uh, liking. It can be either in this smaller window here or uh, maximize the full screen. You can also do what we did before and hit it full screen to 
uh, look at your video while you're in the software here. Uh, so what I've done is loaded in a card that I had in the camera. I can switch between different videos here. The problem though is that I can't really edit on a timeline here. So their version of editing, they call this a video editor, but I would not call it that. Uh, you can set an in and out point for a video. You then push this record button and it makes a new file. So if I hit record here, it's going to say, okay, output the video file that you want uh, with those uh, ins and outs. And then you go over here and then add all the files together and stitch them together that way. So it really is not an intuitive editing experience here by any stretch. There's no timeline, there's no audio controls. Uh, you really are kind of just stuck with uh, trimming videos and stitching them together. So very rudimentary editing. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, it's what it is, but I think it's something that I would like to see improved or maybe some standard develop here. Uh, you also have a means of uh, trying out different ways to look at your video. So you can look at like the front and the back here simultaneously as you're playing back the video. I know for some folks, they might want to do that. Here's another angle where you can look at all four different quadrants at the same time. Uh, you've got a 360 degree panorama that you can look at everything all at once. And they have a couple different ways for scrolling video here also. So you can kind of scroll around here. All these are pretty nice when you're in the software to look at, but they're really not useful on uh, an export necessarily because this is not going to be something supported by the major video services that you might share this with, even have this weird ring thing also. So these are kind of cool to look at, but uh, usually what you want to do is probably just hit the share button and export the video for Facebook or YouTube. Now the good news is that both YouTube and Facebook do support 360 degree video that you generate from this software so your friends and family and viewers can look at those 360 degree videos on their uh, devices and if they have Google Cardboard they can do a sort of VR experience with it also. The problem though again comes back to the intuitiveness or lack thereof on the software. So if I hit the share button here, uh, you can see I've got uh, YouTube and Facebook options. And uh, what it wants me to do is remember how I had the camera oriented when I shot the video. Not a big deal if you are shooting with the lens pointed straight up, uh, but if you are using the camera in a different orientation, like having the lens facing forward to get a broader view of the front of you, uh, you do not, ha you have to remember exactly what orientation you had the lens in. And then uh, what I'm finding is, at least at the moment, this might be a software bug, that when I upload it, it's usually the reverse of what I'm seeing here in the window. So you have to maybe do some trial and error with it. Uh, one tip I have for you is that if you're not comfortable with the software connecting to your YouTube account, uh, leave the account information blank and just hit OK, because what it's going to do is actually create a file that uh, will be compatible with YouTube that you can just upload. So that's what I've been doing, just clicking the share button, but getting the file onto my desktop and uploading it that way. I'm going to put in some video footage on my Lime.TV Extras channel, which I'll link down below in the video description, so you can see some raw footage out of the camera that it just took right out of the camera, put it through the software, and then uploaded it so you can take a look and see how it looks. Let's take a look now and see what happens on YouTube after the video gets uploaded. All right, so here's what the image looks like inside of YouTube, and what will happen is when you upload that video, uh, YouTube will recognize that it's a 360 degree video and allow your viewers to use their mouse to to scroll around with it. There's a cool thing that'll happen on mobile phones too, which I'll show you in a second. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Now you'll notice two things. First is that huge lens flare right there. This is a very common problem with this camera. I'm getting these all the time, depending on where the sun is in the sky. So uh, just how this is designed really lends itself to a lot of lens flaring and other uh, reflections off of its plastic housing. Uh, they also have these little protectors for the lens that they actually recommend you have off. Uh, this is what it looks like with those protectors off, and that was shot with the protector off, so it'll probably be even worse if you have the lens protector on. So just be prepared, depending on where the sun is in the sky, you're going to have a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Another problem you'll see here is that there's this big black area here at the bottom. Uh, that is because that is where the image cuts off, and uh, that is how YouTube deals with it. So uh, if you want to get the full scene uh, completely visible to your viewers, you'll need to have two cameras, one on the top, one on the bottom. You can stitch those two images together with some of the software they include with it, and you would have the full field of view. Another way around it would be to point the lens forward, and that will give you the full field of view facing forward, as you can see here. So I can see all the way down to my feet and all the way up to the sky, but I will lose the image on the left and the right here because those go beyond what the lens can see, but that is a way to get a more immersive environment if you only have one camera. Now, another cool thing when you're watching on a mobile device is that uh, YouTube's app will uh, recognize this 360 degree video and let you turn your phone to see the, the scene change here, and you can even go ahead and uh, stick it in a pair of Google 
cardboard and get a more virtual reality kind of experience in a stereoscopic mode here with one of their cardboard headsets. We've looked at those quite a bit here on the channel in the past, a really quick and easy and cheap way uh, to do some virtual reality. Remember, this is not 3D though, so it will be more of a static image, but uh, you can move your head around and look in a direction versus just using a mouse or something like that. So that might be more uh, fun for your viewers to experience, but again, don't be expecting a really high definition video experience here. It's kind of a gee whiz kind of thing, but really nothing that's going to blow your viewers away. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is their mobile app for configuring the camera. The nice thing about the app is that it will stretch out the image to give you kind of a preview as to what your viewers might see when you upload it to your favorite social network. So it's not real time though. So as I uh, move my hand across the camera here, you can see that it takes quite a while for that to pick up on the, uh, the app here. So you're getting just snippets of images throughout uh, the course of its communication with your phone. But again, it's enough to kind of get your uh, camera situated for a uh, particular shot that you're hoping to achieve. So that is the Kodak PixPro 4K. And I think if you're looking at this camera or the Ricoh Theta, I think the Ricoh Theta is the better buy. It shoots at a lower resolution, but it has two lenses on it for both the front and the back. So you get that full uh, field of view without the limitations that uh, we saw with this one, where things get cut off when you go past the, uh, the viewpoint of the lens. Now, of course, that's correctable on this camera by buying a two camera kit, but now you're into $800 territory. And I just don't think the consumer uh, 360 cameras are at a point that warrants spending that much money on them just yet. I think in the next year or two, we're going to see this technology evolve tremendously, especially if there's more consumer demand for it. So if you're eager to, to try it out and play with it, uh, the Theta is a much better choice than uh, this camera is because it can do more for less money. But stay tuned. I think we're going to see some really cool stuff coming up at CES and uh, other events in the near future that might uh, be more exciting than what we saw here. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.